We welcome you today. I uh, wanted to discuss uh, the actual fun fundamentals and applications of coarse wave division multiplexing. And we'll take a look at what is it and how it's made up and how it helps you uh, in your fiber networking, uh, either across your base or from base to base or within your own buildings within the base itself. All right, so we'll take a look at some of the features and functionality. All right, so we're going to look at what what is WDM technology and a little overview of that. WDM stands for wave division multiplexing. And that basically means that I'm taking a fiber optic link and I'm splitting it up into wavelengths to give you more capacity and more capability through that. Uh, what are the features and benefits of it? And then we'll look at some real world cases and use cases of it. And then there's actually two terms up here, CWDM and DWDM. So CWDM is coarse wave division multiplexing and DWDM is dense wave division multiplexing. We'll take a look at how they uh, correspond to each other. All right, so wave division multiplexing. What it is is it's a technology that allows you to take an optical fiber and split it into multiple wavelengths. So today, you might have a device, and you plug in your SFP to that device, and you plug in the other side, and now you've used that pair of fiber. And what wave division multiplexing allows you to do is actually put multiple channels through the same fiber pair. So instead of just having one device attached to one device, you can have multiple devices attached to multiple devices over the same loop. The way that's done is because it's splitting the light path inside the fiber optics. So actually a different wavelength becomes a different path for the actual traffic to travel on. All right, so traditionally, like we we're saying, I take a fiber loop, I plug in a device on each side, I've used that fiber loop up, because one fiber does transmission and one side does receive, right? So it pretty much becomes fully consumed after a while. So you have so many fiber pairs within your bundle, it's going from building to building or area to area, and then you start plugging in devices and they get all used up, or what we call fiber exhaustion. So at that point, you can't put any more devices on there, so what, what else can you do? You can put in new fiber, but we all know that takes some doing because you've got to either trench or hang it. First you've got to buy it, then you've got to trench it, then you've got to hang it, and then you've got to connect it up to those particular locations. Um, or you can either deploy WDM technology, and again, what this is doing is it's taking the fiber that's already in place, and it's allowing you to utilize it better than, than what you're doing with it. You can put more capacity on it, and typically that's what you're looking at, is more bandwidth capability, more capacity, more devices on the same fiber that you already have in the ground uh, at that location. All right, so here's the, ana the analogy of it is like a highway, right? So I have my fiber loop, and if I want to increase the capacity of that fiber loop, I make more lanes, just like you would on a highway, right? And those, la those extra lanes in your fiber loop are going to be the wavelengths. So different wavelengths is a different, is a different lane like you see on a highway here. So again, I can, I can utilize my highway better or I can go under construction and try to create uh, a, a more lanes uh, like you would in a situation like this, which obviously is tougher to do. All right, so what's the qualifications of using WDM? Well, you're going to increase capacity between locations that already have existing fiber, right? So again, you got fiber from this building to this building. You've already used it up. So the idea is you want to actually increase the capacity of it. You want to create more connections over that same fiber, all right? So you're not in, a, in an exhausted situation. You also can support multiple protocols with CWDM. So it's protocol agnostic. I don't care what you put through there. You could put T1 traffic through there. You could put T3 traffic through there. You could put uh, Ethernet through there or OC48 or OC192. You can put in 10 gig Ethernet, 1 gig Ethernet, 100 meg. So it's agnostic to speed and protocol. If I wanted to take one of these multiplexers, which is a CWDM multiplexer, and it shows me I can plug in different devices now onto the same fiber loop. These could all be 10 gig, 
Okay, because there isn't a limitation to that. So the idea is not only are you increasing the paths that you have through your fiber, but you're also increasing the capacity. So it might be 100 meg today that you're running through there. You could put a 10 gig link through there, through that same fiber. All right, so agnostic to speed and protocol when you're doing CWDM. All right, utilize your existing network better is another qualification. This solution, CWDM, is all passive. All right, what that means is you don't plug it in. There's no power to connect to it. There's no configuration. So there isn't go in and have to program all this stuff. This, this operation is plug and play. Essentially, I put in a mux like this. I plug in my one fiber pair loop. All the rest of these are LC connectors that I just plug a CWDM SFP into the device and plug the, the loop into here on a separate wavelength. So this is literally plug and play. There's no configuration, there's no fans, there's no power, all right? It's all a passive system which makes it easy to install on, on, the, on the actual network that you have today. All right, the solution can either be point to point or it could be multi-pointed. In other words, there's, there are multiplexers called add drop moxes. So if you could picture this, I have a fiber loop going from this building to this building, and now I put a multiplexer on it. So now I have multiple connections going through the building. I could take that fiber and drop it off at a building in between. That's called an add drop multiplexer. What it essentially does is it drops off one wavelength, which is a fiber connection to that building and the rest of them, all the wavelengths keep going on that fiber loop. So you, you, in an add drop mux, you have a capability of dropping off a fiber connection along the way so that you can actually expand your network out a little bit. And you're still using that same fiber one pair of loop that you have. So it really gives you the capacity of not only just going from end to end, but you can drop off fiber connections along the way to other buildings along, uh, along that path. All right, and then converting your current equipment, instead of using just a regular SFP like this, you just get a CWDM SFP. So in other words, on it, it's going to say this is a certain wavelength. So when I plug this into my device and then I plug it into the MUX, it shoots light on 1470 or it shoots light on 1490 or on 1510. So there are different SFPs that go in your equipment that then shoot that traffic over one wavelength. And that's how you split this up. So the ease of it is plug this into your device and plug it into the MUX. That's it. That's all it takes. Yes, sir? Does it work with multi mode? It only works with single mode. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. It's only single mode fiber. Well, first of all, typically your device has something called DMI, which is Diagnostic Monitoring Indicator. So it would tell you what actual SFP was in there. So it would say it's a 1470 or a 1510. So DMI would actually show you what actual wavelength you have for that device. Well, typically your connection is going to be one endpoint to the other endpoint. So really it's just the fiber in between those two endpoints with a different wavelengths on it. Okay, so two devices with uh, wavelength specific SFPs, right? Exactly. So if I had these muxes, I would have one on this side and one over here. And now what I'm doing is instead of only putting one set of traffic through there, I'm actually putting six to up to 16 uh, wavelengths. So I'm actually dividing that one loop of fiber into 16 wavelengths so I can have 16 separate devices on there on one loop, on one pair of fiber, as opposed to just having one device connected to one device. 
And like you said, what it'll be is a separation of wavelength uh, divisions there. Yep. All right, so this is essentially what it looks like, right? So I have a wavelength. You can see they're different colors. So wavelengths are different colors of light. So they're split up, they go across, and then they demux out on the other side. But essentially, it's allowing you to put more capacity. You have fiber already, so why not use the capacity that's on the fiber to your benefit? And that's really what this is for. Again, a wide variety of different communications environments are supported. So it's all based on the SFP. Now, what if you had like T1 or T3? It's not really an SFP product that you could plug an SFP into, but you could use a media converter. So now a media converter has maybe a T1 or multiple T1s on it with a fiber connection. Well, that fiber connection is now a CWDM SFP I plug into it. And now I'm shooting those four T1s over that one wavelength. So there's media conversion to take care of things that aren't Ethernet. Thing that, that's TDM technology, but it still works over that. So the idea is I can shoot TDM traffic. I can shoot Ethernet. I can shoot OC48. I, I, have a, I, ha, I can shoot 10 gig. So all of that can sit, reside in the same mux over that one fiber loop. It's just a pair of fiber. Yes, sir? Sixteen total channels is the max. Yep. And what's the separation you said you were at the reference is twenty. It's twenty nanometers, but I got a I got a slide coming up, so So is that this a certified yet? Because you know, you start talking about have different applications, protocols, and the same buffer tube, they get a little nervous much it, less than the same strength. The thing is it's just a layer one technology. Yeah. So it's the same as having just SFPs. Because it's really the same they can't cross over each other because the wavelength is specific to that. There can't be bleed over because of the definition of CWDM the way it is. All right, so let's look at three different types of WDM. So the first type, we call it WWDM. And what this is, is if you had a single fiber SFP and you put two wavelengths on it, and I'm sure all of you have seen this where I take a, an SFP that only has one fiber, and I shoot 1310 down on one side, but it receives on 1550 on the, on the back side. So it's where I use a single fiber. So that's what WWDM means. It's just SFPs that are single fiber, but they can shoot two wavelengths. So one's a transmit wavelength, and so one's a receive wavelength. And then on the other side, it's the opposite way, right? So if this guy's transmitting 1310 and receiving 1550, then this guy transmits 1550 and receives 1310. So they're opposites. And that's how I have a single fiber. So this is analogous of like a two lane road, right? So now I'm shooting two wavelengths over one fiber, over a single fiber. Not a pair, just a single fiber. It's bidirectional and it just lets me shoot each wavelength in a different direction and receive it. So that's the simplest form of WDM. That's as simple as you can get, just SFPs. All right? But the, is, the issue is I only have one connection through there, one, one 1310 to, to 1550 on the other direction. All right? So again, media conversion can be put in there, and then you're just doing a uh, transfer back and forth between those two wavelengths. Now, CWDM, CWDM could be four channels to 16 channels, all right, capacity-wise. They are divided in spacing of 20 nanometers. That means the first wavelength starts at 1310 nanometers, then it goes to 1330, then 1350, then 1370, then 1390, and it goes all the way up to 1610. So those are my 16 divisions that I have on CWDM. They're based on 20 nanometers apart from each other. This is fairly inexpensive as opposed to trying to lay new fiber. Utilize the existing fiber that you have today and just make it have increased capacity and increased connections on it. And again, it's passive. So there's no plugging it in, there's no 
doing configuration or anything like that. It's pretty much plugging the SFPs, plugging the fiber loop, you're done. So CWDM, coarse wave division multiplexing, shows me that I have a, again, multiple links coming in, going across, one fiber pair coming out as multiple because their wavelengths are all separated. And then add drop, this is my add drop scenario where I put in these colors, take it across, but I drop off a color here. And then I keep going. All right? So I can, I can drop off. And I can add in either way. Are we doing a single fiber? This is still a fiber pair. But this coming off of here will be a wavelength of that. All it means is that if I drop this off, this doesn't come out on this side anymore because I dropped it off there. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, that drop off is sensitive to the frequency that you want. It's you the wavelength drop off. Wavelength but it's truly a fiber drop-off, so you're, it could be 10 gig if you wanted it to be, because it's on that one wavelength. Yes, sir? Probably another one of my innocent questions, but how does it know to drop off? Is it IP address? No. It, it, the, there's a multiplexer in between that's specific to a wavelength. Okay. So each ad drop has a, there's a 1310 ad drop and there's a 1330 ad drop. So there's an actual specific wavelength drop. That's how it looks. They're all good questions, so don't be afraid to ask questions because they're all good questions. All right, so this is what CWDM looks like. You can see the different color bands are the actual different wavelengths that I use. And there's always a center frequency. And the center frequency is at 20 nanometers apart from each other. That works with that. All right, there is DWDM, which is dense wave division multiplexing. Dense wave division multiplexing divides up wavelengths in only 0.8 nanometers. So what that means is now I can get 160 wavelengths in the same spot that I had 16 of them in CWDM. The difference with this, though, is that it is an active system. You must power it up. You must configure it. The actual SFPs that go into here are what are, what are called tunable SFPs. So they can be adjusted to a certain wavelength. So if I look at DWDM, it allows me to do multiple wavelengths by tuning them. All right, so I have to do configuration with that. It gives you more capacity, but it's also more costly too. The expense of, of buying the equipment. It's about double what CWDM is for cost. And see here you can see the capacity of DWDM. So very small nanometer apart <coughs> wavelengths. Yes, sir. Um, well, you can plan it out because you can do rings. It doesn't have to just be end-to-end. -end. You can do rings with it. Uh, a lot of times you'll see, like, telephone carriers build a ring, and they, and they do that. They do redundancy connections on there based on that. Yep. So you do have some backup capacity in case there's a failure in one direction. Exactly. All right, let's look at... The features and benefits of CWDM. So the first thing is increased bandwidth. Okay, again, if I had a, just one fiber loop and I had my two SFPs connected with my devices, this, again, this could be 100 meg going across that loop, or this could be a gig, or this could be 10 gig. But that's it. Once I plug this into that loop, that's all the capacity I have. When I have CWDM and I take this multiplexer and I plug its connection into the loop here, now I can put 10 gig, 10 gig, 10 gig, 1 gig, however much I want. So you're already increasing your capacity 
on one single loop because, again, this is agnostic to speed. So these could all be 10 gigs if you wanted it to be. So where I was running 100 meg before, I can now run 80 gig because the, the fiber handles the capacity. It's just what you're plugging into it that, that makes a difference. So the first way to increase your bandwidth is to increase it by putting in CWDM. All right. Um, so here it tells you, again, some of the things we talked about. Agnostic protocol of speed. So I don't care if it's 10 gig Ethernet, if it's OC192, doesn't matter to me. Because you know what? I'm not looking at frames. I don't do frame inspection. I don't do anything. It's, it's layer one. I'm shooting that signal out, and it's getting to the other side. And your devices are talking to each other based on protocol, not my device. All right, on that, in that scenario. All right, I always like to use this slide because the colors tell you everything, right? Every different color is a different wavelength in CWDM. So a device is connected here, and then it's connected on here, and it's connected on here, and this is how I get my 16 devices. I go from 1310 all the way to 1610, and it's all based on it's a different wavelength that it runs on. All right, so I'm bringing in one loop, and then I'm just dividing it up based on wavelengths. I always like to kid everybody, you know, this is really smoke and mirrors without smoke, right, because it's just mirrors. It's just prisms. That's really what CWDM is. It takes in a fiber signal, and it splits it up into different wavelengths as prisms. What will happen is the actual SFP has the actual attenuation, so they'll come in 40 kilometer sizes or 80 kilometers or 160, and it's based on the wavelength, the laser, the power of the laser on that. So it'll, anytime you look at a CWDM SFP, it'll have a link budget on it, and truly we're going to talk about that in a couple slides, but link budget is important, exactly what he's asking about, because it's saying, how far can this laser shoot and... You know, so if I have an 80-kilometer laser, that's 50 miles, okay, it can go 50 miles. If I set that down on my desk in my lab and I said, I'll put an 80-kilometer in here and see what happens, it's going to, like, be way too hot, right, because I have a distance of fiber of six feet and I'm shooting 80 kilometers on. So that basis is based on the SFP that you get, what, what the kilometer size is and then the laser strength will be that. And then, of course, that will also have a receiver sensitivity on that SFP, meaning when it gets to the other side, it better have a certain link budget capacity or it won't see the signal, right? So typically, I might shoot a laser out at, let's say, plus 8 dB. When it gets to the other side, it'll say that receiver sensitivity on that, that SFP is like minus 21 dB. So what happens is along the way, it degradates, just like any other signal. It breaks down, right? So we're going to talk about that in a slide coming up. But if you put a connector on a fiber, it takes some of the dB off. If you look at the length of the fiber, it takes some of the dB off. If you splice it, it takes some of the dB. So each one of those little incremental things is degrading the signal as it goes down through. So the idea is we look at our link budget. We say, how much does the laser shoot now as a dB level? And how much can this guy see on this side? And we better be within that range. Is there a planning factor for it, though? I mean, I've done some long there is. like that in Afghanistan where you know, 80, 80 kilometers is a short run for some of the stuff. Right. right. And then you'll look at maybe 160 capacity SFP or whatever, whatever that distance needs to be. But there is a plan for it. I'll, 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 I have a little outline to show you. All right, so again, center wavelengths show up as 20 nanometers apart from each other in CWDM. All right, so that's how it goes from 1310 all the way up to 1610. Each one of those, always think of it as a lane where, uh, where individual traffic can travel on. This is still on the same pair of fiber, but each of those wavelengths is a different uh, path that it can travel. All right, again, it's really, like I said, prisms inside that do it. 
Does not require external power or any kind of power supplies. Everything is powered based on the laser that's inside the SFP, as far as the light's concerned. Yes, question. So are you, you're still using uh, both strands in the pair, one strand from OCC? You are. Yep. So that's a good question that he has. So we have that fiber pair. One is still used as transmit for all these wavelengths, and one is used as receive for all these wavelengths. Now, you might have a question in your head, well, could you use a single fiber with CWDM? And the answer is yes, you can. You can do CWDM on a single fiber, but the catch is you lose half the channels because one, one wavelength has to be transmit then and one wavelength has to be received. So if I do 1310 transmit, I do 1330 receive. Then I do 1350 transmit, I do 1370 receive. So if I have a 16 channel MUX, I get eight channels capacity. But it's still able, it's still possible to do it. Yes? This is a passive system, so if you were to use one strand, how do you, how do you tell the device, how does the device want to go? Because the device will still have the SFP telling it what wavelength it travels on for that. Because you'll use two different SFPs then, right? One will be 1310, one will be 1330. And, and likewise, coming back. So your SFPs plug into the physical device and say your, your core, your data center, whatever. Right. And then that, that, that's how it's transmitting on that wavelength. On that wavelength. On the other end, you have a light device or whatever your communication end is, and that's on the same. That's SFP on the same one. Pulling that, pulling that wavelength. Okay. Exactly. So it's still determined by the SFP you're plugging in how the transmits be transmitted. Kind of like that. <laughs> exactly. Wavelength is determined. Yes, sir. Um, since we went to that space, <laughs> okay. How does this tune into an internal cloud? Does it work in cloud technology at all? Um, Again, this is all based on the two wire, the two, the pair of fiber that it's traveling on. So could I go into the cloud, you're saying, and come back out at another place? Provided that that same pair is directed to where it comes out at. The receiver, there would be another receiver on the other end, right? Right. Just a, maybe an amplifier or a capture, then amplify it. So. Yeah, it's a possibility to pass it to a NUX to the next MUX then, that way. So it still depends on where that fiber loop goes to, because it's really what your direction is. Yep. This is what an optical add drop looks like. So this is a better picture than for me to just tell you what it looks like, and you go, OK, what's he actually saying? So I, I hate that I can't step away from the mic. But anyway, so this is what an add drop mux looks like. So you can see that I have a certain wavelength here. All right. I think I talk loud enough. It'll still hear me. Just come off the other uh, stand. No, it's okay. okay. Uh, so what you can see is any add drop mux is going to be specific to the wavelength. So notice it says 1470 on there. There's one again for 1310, for 1330, for 1350, all the way up to 1610. The idea is I come in with my fiber loop. I still have my my pair, and I go out with my pair that keeps going on to the very end. But now I can drop off an actual fiber connection to this location based on being on 1470. Now, if I just drop and that's it, I want to go to this location and drop this, this traffic off here. This does not pass 1470 anymore down here, going to the next location. Right? 1470 came in here. But when it comes out, it's not going to have 1470 in if I only drop this off. Because it's gone. That wavelength's gone. So if I went all the way to the end of this fiber, there's no 1470 on that side. But the key is, if you have an add drop mux, you could actually take another switch that's at this location, plug it into the add. It will now put it on 1470 going to the destination 
1470 will be dropped off at that mux at the end. So the idea is I can drop off a fiber connection and I can add another one back in that goes to my destination where it is. So this really gives you more flexibility as far as I want a fiber connection going to this location, but I can take devices that are already at that location and hook them up and keep them going to the end destination on it. So again, this really makes sense as to the capability that you have available to you. Where again, I'm still using one fiber pair and I'm doing this kind of separation with it. Right, so there's a lot of value for this. Here's another question that typically comes up in your head. What if my optic of my device is fixed? What if I'm plugged into something that's only 1310 and I can't really change that? So if that's the case, you know, how am I going to get all of these wavelengths going if my device is only 1310? And don't be confused, if I have a regular SFP that says 1310 on it, this is a wideband 1310. Your typical regular SFP is wideband. What does that mean? Wideband means it says it's 1310, but it actually spreads out to multiple wavelength size across the wideband. So in other words, because you're only plugging in this on one fiber loop and you're plugging it on the other side, it doesn't care if this bleeds over to other wavelengths. But when I'm talking about 1310 on a MOX like this, it's called narrow band. That means it must stay within that 20 nanometers. It can't just bleed over to 1400 like this guy can do. So don't be confused when I hear, when I'm saying 1310 fixed, is, is, when I'm talking about that, that's a wideband 1310. And that can't work with CWDM, right? But what I can do is I can get a media converter that's two SFPs. And now guess what? I plug 1310 in the top connector that matches my device. And I plug in the CWDM in the other connector, which now I've taken 1310 and put it on 1470 and shot it through my CWDM. So I've altered the wavelength that of my fixed device so it works with my CWDM device, right? Because I've done a media conversion. I've taken, this guy's gonna talk to my switch and this guy's gonna go across my mux because the media converter has two SFPs in it. One's gonna have the 1310 talking to my device but he's going to convert it to 1470 and now it's going to go by path on my CWDM. So if you have a fixed optic, we can get around that and still use CWDM. All right? Just making a conversion of the actual wavelength in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so media converters are three R's, typically. So you're going to do a reamplify and, and, and repeat it with something like that. So I could even put one of these in between if you had a longer distance to go. Yep. Because it's going to reshape it at that point. Yep. All right, so I threw a lot at you, right? of what, it, what is CWDM. So now look, let's look at, okay, now we know we have these devices, we have these SFPs, we know we use a fiber loop. So how do we implement this now? So this is the big question that a lot of your questions are coming from. You know, what type, what type of traffic is it and how much scalability do you need? What kind of channel assignments? Do I just need an eight capacity like this guy is? Or do I need the max? Do I need 16? Again, if you notice, it's exactly the same size. You fit in a 19 inch rack. So typically what you see is, if I'm gonna make the investment, I'm gonna go 16. Because eventually you're gonna have to plug other things in. 
you know, you're going to get eight, and then you're going to fill it up. So you should have got 16 in the first place. But just from experience, I know that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mission Creek's gonna gonna dictate that and from an architect engineer standpoint, I like to have a lot more capacity yeah. than I need. Yeah, cause because the same thing happened when I put the fiber in the ground in the first place. I said, uh, you only need forty eight pairs. That's it. And of course you used all that up already, so that's why you're looking at this solution. This to this is a few hundred dollars difference. So it really doesn't, it, it's, it's very non-incremental. Okay. Yep. The right way to look at that is what's the cost of placing new fiber in comparison to this? That, that's yeah. A, that's the real that's typically how you're gonna, definitely going to look at it. Now, obviously, this is a, a way cheaper solution than putting in new fiber. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, that's awesome. and really, you're, you want it because you want to use the capacity of what you already have in place. Uh, but typically, just for a round number to throw at you, it's about five thousand dollars to to put in these types of muxes, all right? And that's going to be a lot economical more than trying to put fiber in. That just helps for planning purposes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, sir. Say it again. Um, they actually just come individually, so you just buy buy a pair of them. I want to make sure I don't overshoot my time. Okay, so what do my topology requirements look like? So again, this is all part of your implementation and planning stage, right? So what kind of services do you need to deploy? So you need to look at that. Is it any kind of TDM traffic? Well, we can handle that if you have it. Is it 100 meg, gig, 10 gig? Okay, so we just have to write it down and see what capacity you need uh, across there, depending on what kind of connections you want to make. Uh, you know, is it going to be linear or is it going to be a ring? So I can do either one. Uh, you know, is it going from this building to this building or are you going around the whole um, base with it type of thing? You know, some, some bases have a whole loop around so you can utilize that. Um, you know, we've, we've done this kind of stuff at uh, like the San Diego airport. Okay, this isn't military but Basically, they're like, I got a loop around the airport. I've used all my fiber up. So I, I still want to use add drops, drop off different fibers to different locations. You know, it's a per, if it's a perfect thing for a ring type architecture also. How many nodes do you need? What's the distance between the fiber loss? We're going to talk a little more about fiber loss uh, in the next couple of slides. All right, what's your traffic flow? What kind and how many fibers are available? And by the way, you were asking me about, can you do multi-mode over this, which you can't. But again, remember that media converter has the two SFPs, so I could take my multi-mode in one side and come out CWM on the other side. So there is ways around it to use it. Uh, what size systems need to be deployed, and do you need any add drop locations for that? Now, this is the most important slide of the whole presentation, right, because this is link budget. This is your biggest concern that you have to have when you're making this kind of uh, uh, implementation. Anytime I go a kilometer of fiber, it's, it's three-tenths of a dB loss. All right, so here's where I say, here's how much the SFP is putting out. I start putting a subtract sign after that, okay? Because I subtract off how many kilometers of fiber am I going. Anytime I have a connector on, I lose three-tenths of a dB. Anytime I slice it, I lose three tenths. If I put one of these muxes on, which includes one connector on it, then I lose 3.3 dB. Okay, it's just the nature of the beast, right? This guy has a lot of work to do, breaking up from one fiber loop to all of these channels, so there are dB losses within this box, which just happens to be 3.3. If you use an add drop mux, it's only 1.1 with a connector included, all right? So it's less loss on an add drop going back out and dropping off that wavelength. 
So if I look at some of the SFPs here as an example, you can see I have a 40 kilometer, an 80 kilometer, 160 kilometer, and then you can see the link budgets on here. All right? Between the transmit power and receiver sensitivity, I have 18 dB, I have 24 dB, I have 37 dB. What that means is I have a capacity of loss on this side. It's going to be a minus number that I can still see the light. And then there's going to be a positive number where I'm transmitting because that's the, the boost of the signal going out from its original location. So I give you a little example here just as a, a, as a uh, note for you. So I have a receiver sensitivity range and transmit power of plus 3 to minus 21. So I look at my example. I have an SFP on here. Okay, I lose some on the MUX the connector. There's 40 kilometers of fiber, so I lose 8 dB on that. And then there's another connector, and then there's the MUX. So I come up with minus 15 dB. But my receiver is minus 21, so I'm good. So this is how you map this out. You look at distance, connections, MUXs, add drops. You add all those numbers together, and then you make sure you're good. This is very important too. I always leave a 2 dB safety margin. So in your calculation, don't come to minus 20 and say, oh yeah, well, that's good, because this is always a science of a little variability in it, right? So give yourself 2, B, 2 B dB of loss for that. But that's essentially how you make the calculation up to make sure when you put this in, you're good from one end to the other end. Any questions for me on that? Okay, just some real world examples quick. Uh, point to point on CWDM. All right, so once again, it's kind of easy to understand. Shooting wavelengths in one direction across a pair of fiber. That's the transmit side, this is the receive side. I could do ring topology, so Here's where I'm actually muxing and demuxing all the way around this ring that I have. In some cases, you might have just a switch to the copper. It's not fiber. Throw, throw a media conversion in between it, convert it to fiber, and then you can use your CWDM for that. And now you have your connections going out to all your devices. Just convert the copper to fiber. Security cameras. Everybody has security cameras on base. I ran into a situation where somebody told me I have two fibers, two pairs, but I got to hook up 18 cameras that are out my location. Can I do it? You can do it with CWDM. So they had three locations of cameras out here, little huts that I can go to, and then my main center. So how do I do it? What I proposed for him was put in a fiber switch that has CWDM SFPs in it, goes to each of these wavelengths on the CWDM muxes. This is my one fiber pair that goes out to their location, and this is the other fiber pair that goes out to the location. I use my add drop muxes. I drop off to a media converter, an SFP that's wavelength specific. And now I have a camera on each wavelength. So now I'm supporting 18 cameras on two pairs of fiber. All right? That's what essentially it looks like. So this is just the same pair of fiber. Goes from one to the other. All right? And I'm dropping off different colors here, which are the different wavelengths. And then my second pair of fiber was the red one coming in, which takes care of the last ones. So two pairs of fiber. 18 cameras hooked up over fiber with that. Air Force bases. They're in a place where, again, add drops allow me to drop off a fiber connection at different locations. So now I have one loop going across, but where, I, where I'm dropping off fibers, I drop off the red one there, the purple, the green. Notice when I come back over on this side, the red, purple, and green are gone now but I still have other devices connected between the two end-to-end -end locations. 
but I've given myself the capability of dropping off a fiber at these other locations for connection. You also had a scenario of a military base where they did have a loop going around the whole base. So now again, it looks kind of complicated, but I can ring this all the way around to all the different hut locations that they had based on there was a loop of fiber going around in a circle around the base. You know, and again, I'm only using up one pair to link all these together. You still have other pairs that were available to do whatever you wanted with them. Ah, the single strand CWDM. This is where I only have one fiber, but I still can do CWDM with it. The capability is because I can use one wavelength for transmit and one wavelength for receive. So again, this is going to be based on my SFP that I plug into the device, how it transmits and receives on different wavelengths. But it is a possibility to utilize it. kind of looks like this. All right, so I have my SFP down here going into my device, all right? And then over, over a single strand, it's coming back on the other side here. Again, based on transmit one is one wavelength and receive is the other wavelength. The only thing I'm doing there is cut my capacity in half. If I have a 16 channel, I have eight channels because I have to use two wavelengths. This is really complicated. This is a mobile backhaul application. So this is where a cell company had one strand going around and we managed to touch all their locations based on CWDM. These are all add drop boxes out there. All right, so CWDM versus DWDM. So the interspacing is different. CWDM is 20 nanometers, and DWDM can be as low as two tenths of a nanometer, but it's typically 0.8 is really the center. You can have up to 16 channels, 160. All right, typically you're going 40 to 80. We do have 160s available. Um, fixed laser. So once I plug in 1470, it's 1470. These guys are tunable, so they can adjust to different wavelengths. Of course, they cost more, too, in that case. This is the next one, lower or higher cost. All right, again, to summarize, what are we doing with CWDM, and why is it important? You increase the fiber capacity. That's the first thing you're going to do without pulling any more fiber. So take the fiber that's already in place and utilize it better, all right? Get more capacity out of what you already have sitting there. Multiple protocols can run on the same fiber pair. Again, we don't care because we are a layer one device. We, we just look like a fiber to every one of these channels. We don't do packet inspection. I don't care what your protocol is. We don't have to match anything frame-wise. It's just pushed through as a layer one type uh, topology. All right, WDM optics are available in different sizes. So again, they can be 100 meg, they can be gig, they can be 10 gig. It comes in SFP pluses, XFPs, all different flavors for CWDM. You're going to convert existing wideband optics to narrow band, all right, which gives you more bandwidth capacity and more channel capacity with that. And it can either be used point to point or you can have add drops in there. And then CWM 10 gig offers uh, the benefits uh, of, of utilizing the, the fiber to its capacity, capacity 10 gig on each, on each wavelength, uh, which gives you, again, an, a total increased capacity of your links. What's the value proposition? So what makes sense to do this? It's plug and play with no configuration. All right, so installation is, is, is at its easiest. It's pretty much just plug in SFPs to your devices, plug in a fiber loop, and you're there. All right, because the MUX will do everything else for you. 
it's going to divide all of these up based on the wavelength that you see on each channel. All right, so it's just a matter of taking your CWM SFP, plug it into your switch, or plug it into your router, or plug it in where, whatever device you're going to use, and then just hook the cable up to it. These come in simple LC connectors. All right, so if I take this out, it's just a dual LC. Just plug in that cable, and then plug it into your SFP. And then the line side is also uh, LC connectors on it. The flexibility of it, it gives you high availability. Uh, if you're using multi-mode, you can use uh, those media converters to change it to single mode. You can take a fixed optic on single mode and change it to CWDM optic. So you have a lot of different uh, capabilities with that. It's scalable. So again, bandwidth capacity goes 100 meg all the way up to 160 gig. All right, if I put 10 gig on each one of those ports. All right, and then it says you have investment protection. So you're, you're still just using your standard optical ports that you have on your devices. You're not really changing any of your equipment out. It all compensates the equipment you're already using. So you don't have to change anything on your side with that. All right, so you keep the same, uh, same equipment that you have. All right, any overall questions for me? I know it's a lot to throw at you 